groups are born again. I was born once in water, and when I get born again, and this was a term used for Gentiles, just to be clear, the concept of being born again wasn't used for Jews. It was actually used for Gentiles that converted to Judaism. Isn't that ironic? That the concept of being born again would lean more to Gentiles that say, well, I was born, but I want a new identity, and I'm choosing it within Judaism. So I get born again. When he says that then to Nicodemus, though, Nicodemus is Jewish. Yeah. So Look at Nicodemus' answer. He says, how can a man be born a second time? Is this Sanhedrin-level scholar such an idiot that he doesn't understand, well, you know the basics of Judaism, you're born again. Of course this man knew the basics of Judaism. He's playing dumb on purpose. It's part of the interaction between them. Mm. Jesus is pushing him. We're playing a game yeah. So let me play the game. And you'd say, well, Rabbi, how does a person that went to junior high and high school and studied at university, how does he go back and do that all over again? So in other words, it's like you asking me, so would you like me to go to grade one again and start all over? Like, I just want to know where would I do that? That's illogical. That's Mm -hmm. not literally what's going on. What's actually going on is a rabbi is having a rabbinical conversation with another rabbi, effectively. Yes. And he's creating a little path. Let's go down this path. Well, okay, you've asked me a question. You're talking like there's something I need to learn. So I'm going to play the dumb student because that's how we do this in rabbinical talk. We we ask these probing questions. Mm-hmm. And you answer a question with a question. That's how it works in Judaism. It's okay, but, but Jesus' statement was, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But it sound, what I'm hearing is a, a, a born again means a Gentile who converted to Judaism. Right. So if Nicodemus is a Jew who doesn't need to convert to Judaism, then he doesn't need to be born again. Right. And so what's happening is Jesus is saying, you know a lot, but you've come to me. You've come to me under the cover of darkness because I am that radical to what you've been taught, but you've come. So clearly you want to go off down the rabbit hole with me. Okay. In comparison to where you come from and what you think you know, you are not nearly as close to me as you think in this single context. And so I'm saying to you, you are the equivalent of a Gentile that needs to be converted Mm. if you Mm. want to see the kingdom from my perspective. Yeah, that's really good. Now, if you don't know all of that context, you'll miss all of that. Oh, Gentile, I just learned it for the first time today. I've wondered what he was talking about for years. He says... I tell you the truth, unless you are a person is born of water and of the Spirit. I could never figure out what he meant by born of the Spirit. It just, like, th- it's been a mystery my entire yeah. journey. Don't you think Nicodemus is automatically assuming he's already got the Spirit? Yeah, kind of like what you were talking about yesterday with the wedding guest that, that had the clothes on. Yeah. Right. And, and, and Hashem calls him out and says, you don't have the right clothes on. What are you doing here? When, you go, when I go into an electronics store... What always happens is some eager salesman runs up to me. Can I help you? Mm-hmm. And what's my knee-jerk response every time, at least at first? Unless I am literally there to buy and I know I want help because I can't find it myself. I say to them, no thanks, I'm just looking. This is so – because in the West, particularly in the United States, right, here's the parallel that's coming to mind. Uh here in, in the United States, if I walk into a restaurant with my family and I see that there's a corner booth open and we say, and I say to the wait staff, we'd like that corner booth, the wait staff will say, right away, sir. And they'll walk me to the corner booth. Even if they were thinking they'd sit me at a regular two bench, or, yeah. you know, four chair table or whatever. If I specifically request it, they will say, absolutely. Now, this is a funny story. We go to Mexico several years ago. That's my family and then my mother and father-in-law. And we would go out to a restaurant and we get there and there is nobody at any table in this restaurant. They are completely dead. And my father-in-law says to the waiter, he points, there's a, there's a, a beautiful table sitting out there on an outdoor uh, little patio overlooking a man-made lake. 
And my father-in-law says, we'd like to sit there. And you know what the Mexican guy says? Oh, no, senor, it's not available. It's, it's reserved. My father-in-law knows this game, so he says, fine. We're, he turns around, he says, I'm leaving then. We're not going. And then the guy comes, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> and he pulls him back in. And I'm watching this, and I'm suddenly realizing this, the reason this doesn't occur to me is because I'm an American. Right. Because in America, if you ask for that table and, they don't, and it's not occupied, they'll give it to you. But in Mexico and in most Eastern cultures, it's a game. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's back and forth. It's, it's tug of war. It's tension. It's to see. It's, you get to poke at each other a little bit. And I don't, I, it just doesn't occur to me. 